Oh, what the hell? Beater. What? Mm. Oh, that's stale. Oh, God. Oh. You ready to do this? Uh, oh, we're making a video today? Yeah, all right. I need to make some life changes. Yeah, I think so. Ooh, tea. Look at that. Huh. So you think we should? Do you think we should stop drinking? No, but man, I'm bloated. <laughs> uh, tell me about it. Hey, man, we should like. Have some resolutions here. Maybe we should at least drink like some low-cal beer or something. Uh, I can do that. I think uh, I have. I think I have some. You wait. We got some. Yeah. I just. I planned ahead. Okay. What are you doing back there? Ah. You got me a little cow beer? A little hair of the dog for you? Ah, why not, you know? Here's the New Year's. Oh my God, that's good. All right, I think I'm good to go. Well, today on Genius Brewing, I think we got to teach you guys how to make a low cow beer. Yeah. If you're like us and make fake resolutions every year, yeah, that sounds about right then this might, <laughs> might be a fad that you're interested in doing. Locale is basically a brute style IPA. So let's tell you what we did on this one and run down the, the methodologies behind making something low calorie and still taste this good. Ah, yeah. so, so I'm gonna be completely honest with you and uh, say that I really had nothing to do with this beer. This Except was, for you tasted it. And how's it taste? Um, it tastes like um, mango made love with a tangerine and made my babies in my mouth. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yep. <laughs> I'm that good. So to make a low-cal IPA beer, let's start with a framework. You have to basically know your starting gravity and your finishing gravity, and from that you can calculate how many calories you're going to get off of it. We'll post a link to a calculator below. Bam. So what did we shoot for in this then? So our starting gravity that we were shooting for uh, was basically 1.030 or 1030. That's pretty damn low. It is pretty damn low. Why is this not uh, super thin and bone dry then? It's not super thin and bone dry because I made sure to include plenty of oats and chit mulch, which in addition to being very high in enzymes is also very high in dextrins and things that make it chewier. Well, that makes a lot of sense. So you kind of brewed this in the style of like almost a session hazy-ish? Session hazy was kind of the malt build that I was going for, but I knew I had to topple that on its head to make it a low-cal beer. Because normally those would finish on the high side and leave you with a lot of chewiness. And so what do we do when we need things to not finish on the high side and not be chewy? We add enzymes. Exactly. Yeah. So we'll post the entire recipe to this below, but our basic strategy was we brewed this like a normal uh, hazy style IPA and I dropped the thing. Um, and this one we're actually using Sultana and Lemon Drop hops. Okay, so some kind of new world odd, oddball ones. Yep, mostly because we had a lot of them. <laughs> Sounds about right. Uh, and then uh, the yeast that we actually use and part of what's adding to that tangerineness that I think you're uh, feeling is quike. Oh, yeah, that makes sense actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, that actually sounds like a great way of going about this because otherwise I feel like if you use more of a neutral strain, you're just going to end up with a blah beer. Yeah, the, the nice thing about using the quike too is we were able to finish this beer all of, I think, I think this grain to glass is like six days right now. Yeah. So nice. super, super fresh. Uh, and we did uh, pump that temperature up on that quike strain to uh, right around 100 degrees for the entire uh, duration of the fermentation. Huh, I'll be damned. Yeah. Um, so uh, I know you've done some brute IPAs with me before. Do you want to go over kind of what we do uh, with uh, enzyme adding when we add that enzyme? So typically we've added the enzyme um, late in the fermentation process. <clears throat> did you guys do anything different with it this time? or What we did was we ended up uh, waiting until after the fermentation had slowed down like we always do. Okay. Uh, and we made sure we did it when we dry hopped. That way we only had to open up the vessel once. Makes sense. Uh, we did use a conical, which means we're able to pump CO2 through the bottom of the cone. Uh, we turbulate everything and we kick yeast back up in suspension. Uh, that also keeps the oxygen out of the headspace because we're pumping CO2 through it. Uh, then we opened it up, we added the enzyme, we added uh, the um, 
dry hops, and we also added our first stage of clarifier there. Um, the one other thing that we did is, uh, you probably noticed this doesn't taste bone dry. No, no, it definitely doesn't. It's got body. You yeah. put something in it, didn't you? I did put something in it. Um, we took this idea from Dogfish Head. Dogfish Head made the, uh, uh, what's it called? Slightly Mighty, I think it's called, their low-cal IPA, uh, and they use monk fruit. I think they use monk fruit extract. Um, but what we did in this one is we used, for a barrel, we used a pound of monk fruit sugar. Okay, so same thing. Same kind of thing. Okay. Uh, and so the reason we use that is because monk fruit is actually a, uh, it's a topical diet sugar right now. And uh, um, basically it's sweet and it has body, but it has zero calories because it's not fermentable, kind of like stevia. Except for I think stevia is gonna be much more pungent than monk fruit is, right? Yeah, I've gotten yeah. some, I mean, people say it about both, but I've gotten with stevia kind of a, almost an off medicinal or like a weird, weirdness if you use okay. too much of it. So I think to get yeah. this level of sweetness, uh, the stevia might have been a little off-putting. Yeah. I can taste <clears> the <throat> sweetness, but I, it's it seems pretty neutral to me. That, that, I, don't, I don't think that there's anything off-putting at all about it. I think it's actually a good mask of like uh, a trade-off for grain sweetness. I think the monk fruit yeah. works really well in that. Sounds about right. So basically that's it. We tried to cram as much flavor as possible into a beer that otherwise would be pretty dry and bright like a normal Brut IPA would be. Yeah. But methodology-wise, the kind of works out the same. So ABV, I mean, is it just? Obviously starting at 10 and 30, you don't get very high of an ABV, um, but we did finish out at a perfect one, uh, basically fermented all the sugars possible, uh, which leaves us just under 4%. We're calculated wow. at 3.91%. So Impressive. This, Impressive. Is, this is your Bud Light right here. Yep. Um, honestly, I would take this for any solid hazy pale ale right now. Oh yeah. Um, it's, that's kind of the way the flavor profile is coming through. Awesome job, Pedro. Thank you. Tim, like awesome job. He's in the back somewhere. Awesome job, <laughs> Tebe. Bam. So I think it's important that we mention that Brute IPAs are not the only style that can be locale. If you're using uh, any sort of diastatic yeast, yeast uh, like sours and saisons a lot of, a lot of times dry, uh, dry out a lot, basically just start with a lower original gravity and know that you're not gonna get a ton of alcohol and voila, you have a locale beer. Bam. Shall we chug it? Let's chug this, call it a day. Like, subscribe, comment, uh, ring the bell for notifications, all the things that you do on YouTube. And uh, uh, if you use our Amazon affiliate links that we post below, that actually does help us out a little bit. And so if you're uh, planning on making a gigantic Amazon purchase, just buy one of our things first. <laughs> <laughs> Till next time on Genius Brewing. Cheers, guys. Leave the beer.